What's up, everyone? Welcome back to another juicy episode, and today we're diving deep into the dating pool, or rather, the digital sea of Grindr in Seoul, South Korea. Look, navigating Grindr in any country is like maneuvering a complex labyrinth with mixed signals and emoji codes, but doing it in Seoul? That's like adding a whole new layer of challenges to the maze. So sit tight and get ready for the real tea. First off, let's chat about the cultural vibes in Seoul. South Korea is known for its buzzing K-pop scene, spicy food, and a sprinkle of traditional Confucianism, which means the LGBT plus experience here is, well, complicated. There's no straightforward way to categorize it. Seoul is simultaneously progressive yet conservative. On one hand, we've got pride parades and queer-friendly districts like Itaewon, but on the other, there's still an undercurrent of traditional views that sometimes, just sometimes, make you go seriously. So where does Grindr fit into all of this? Simple, it's your handy Swiss army knife for everything gay. Need a date? Check. Want to meet new friends? Double check. Looking for? Hem. Something casual? You get the drift. But there's a method to this madness, all. Oh. Rule numero uno, safety first. Before you start chatting up that hottie whose profile pic makes your heart skip a beat, know that some folks on Grindr might not be open about their sexuality. This isn't San Francisco, but coming out still has its repercussions here. So before you spill the beans and start planning matching wedding outfits, maybe, just maybe, keep the chit-chat online until you gauge the vibes. No one wants to be the hot gossip topic at the next family reunion. Second, keep in mind that being a foreigner can be both a blessing and a curse. While you may garner extra interest for that unique exotic flair, there's also the possibility of being fetishized. In the land of K-dramas and boy bands, stereotypes about foreign men are just as exaggerated as the hair height in a 1980s rock band. So if you're getting uncomfortable vibes, swipe left, buddy. Now let's get to the fun part, dating spots. Yes, there's a lot more to Seoul than K-pop concerts and late-night karaoke sessions. If you manage to snag a date, consider taking them somewhere that blends tradition with modernity. Trust, it'll give you a perfect balance for those conversation starters. The Han River offers a serene, romantic backdrop, and hey, maybe you'll both fall in love, or at least agree on a second date. Also keep your eyes peeled for LGBT plus events or themed nights. They happen more often than you'd think and can offer a change of scenery from the same old, same old. Whether it's a drag show in Itaewon or a gay club night in Hongdae, let's just say these places are the extra seasoning your Seoul adventure needs. So we've covered the basics, the cultural context, the do's and don'ts, and how to pick the ideal dating spot. But let's not ignore the elephant in the room. What about the actual dating part? To keep it real, this is where you separate the men from the boys. Effective communication is key. You might be fluent in emoji and GIFs, but sometimes a thoughtful question or a witty remark makes you stand out from the sea of torsos and gym selfies. So keep it 100. Look, dating in Seoul all gay is like a delectable dish of bibimbap. It's a mixed bag of flavors and experiences that could be sweet, spicy, and occasionally bitter. But hey, isn't that the essence of any dating scene anywhere in the world? In the end, it's all about finding that person who compliments you, someone who's the spicy kimchi to your steaming bowl of white rice. That's all for this episode, but before you go, do your buddy a solid. If you like what you heard, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel, Asian Pride. Trust, you don't want to miss what's coming up next. Peace out.